I think our our end users today, the the, the municipalities and the services that uh, municipalities provide, uh, they're very they're very much in what we refer to as silos. Uh, and within a silo, uh, for example, uh, water is a silo, wastewater is a silo, buildings are typically silos. Those silos have their own subsets of information, their own uh, key uh, performance indicators, but that information is stuck in that silo. And I think while, while they are trying to utilize their resources to effectively manage the processes and the standards and the workflows inside of those silos, uh, I think there is a new, a new spirit that technology enables, uh, per particularly with the Internet of Things. Um, cities are hearing stories about um, the connected citizens and, and, and the information that we can use to mitigate traffic problems and parking problems and water resource uh, sustainability. They are very much in, a, in, a, in an effective uh, management of the silo, but they, they want to be the best possible city that they can be for the sole driving purpose of attracting new citizens to the city and growing that, that base and growing that community and having professional football teams and concerts. And uh, the, the one thing, the one measurement of a city that everybody talks about, uh, for example, is traffic. And if a city can effectively manage traffic, that, that, that comes off the table. Right? Well, I will say that traffic in Atlanta is worse yeah. than traffic in Barcelona. And he's going to say, no way. Right? But there's technology out there today. Yeah. And that's where the city leaders and the city innovators, they, they want to reduce their, their budget. They want to, well, they don't want to reduce their budget, but they want to reduce the expenditure to their budget. And they want to promote the, the welfare of the citizenry to move, to create that tax base. That's where they want to be. Yeah, in addition, I think also they want to deliver the information to the right person in the right moment. That means not only the centralized room that is really important to synchronize all the infrastructures, also sometimes is to deliver to the citizen, just to, to look where is the, the free park, parking lot to, to go there and to, to, to go faster. And also to the garden, the, the gardener that is in the garden, that is w w he wants to make some irrigation in this moment because he saw that this plant is a little bit uh, under under uh, under level of the irrigation, and that means that uh, this uh, this information should be delivered in the right moment, in the right place. Well, yeah. a, a perfect example is how many times in the rain have we commented on why are they watering the parks in the rain? Yeah. yeah. Right. And if with that, without that lack of visibility yeah. to that to that system, exactly. uh, you don't know whether to turn it on or off. Right. It just is on a timer. Yeah, so, and that's being more efficient with your resources. Yeah. Yeah, we can do it. I think you put a nice example on traffic, and it's it's a nice example. For example, how how we can control for the traffic lights. Okay, it's something that was impossible before. Now we have technologies, we can control traffic lights. Absolutely. And, and I, when we say control, it's not just to, to understand if the, red, the light is red, <laughs> it's, it's yellow. So it's to get more information on top of this, of this uh, asset that they have. For example, how, how is this traffic light consuming energy? Okay, how can we improve this? Or how can we help also the city uh, to change traffic, uh, traffic procedures or traffic uh, uh, strategy when, for example, there is a football game. How can uh, 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 automatically okay, change this uh, organization of the traffic lights, change the strategy, being able to change it automatically without having to go one by one mm -hmm. or doing nothing that it's most of the uh, cities are doing today. Yeah. So the, they can accomplish these new challenges, these new ideas. That, we never thought about that, but that today they can do it using this technology and, and this automatic uh, standard operating process type of. Yeah, we are li we are no longer limited by our our um, our technology. We, you yeah. know, there's a lot of critical systems within the cities that need to be managed, and the sky's the limit when it comes to how to better leverage the resources that we have yeah. and, and become better stewards of those resources. And that's that's a. Uh, that's a key. That's a key uh, piece in infrastructure these days. First of all, I think we help them to understand what is their pain and what are the issues they have. 
So we help them to understand that, that things can, can be done differently. Okay? Uh, and on top of that, what we provide is we provide the technology, the innovation, okay? and the vision to achieve what they are looking for and, and to help them to solve the issues that they have today. I think, I think that's, that's, that's uh, what we can provide to them and how they perceive and how they start consuming our technology, our products, because they feel that we can help them solve the real issues they have today to have a, this holistic view of their operations. There's a lot of skepticism about these types of solutions, the systems of systems and the integrations of silos and the value of that. And I think Schneider Electric does a very good job of, of talking the right talk, the language, the language of the vision, the energy reductions, the, the maintenance efficiencies, the operational efficiencies, the consolidation of data, actionable data, you know, those, those are all things that non-technology customers like to hear because they're buzzwords, they're, in, they're not, they're not overwhelming technology types of terms like IoT mm -hmm. and, 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 and MQTT. Yeah. Uh, these are words that city managers who have these very real problems can, can, um, can grab a hold of. And there's initiatives in all of our cities in North America anyways, where, where cities are trying to reduce their energy footprint by 20, by 20% by 2020, 30% by 3030. And it all ties back to the Energy Independence and Security Act. We, we need to be a little bit more of a steward of our, our natural resources, our climate, uh, all of these things the cities care about. And Schneider Electric is on the forefront of that messaging, being energy independent, coming up with solutions that are impactful, not just to private businesses and, and manufacturing and all of that, but also to, to our cities and our, our, our infrastructure business. And our commitment to developing the technology that will enable them to grow uh, sustainably in the future. Those are the things that, uh, that give credibility and some sense of confidence that this is possible. Uh, cities don't do anything on their own. They hire blue ribbon committees to try to find the inefficiencies and where they need to focus their money because their money's precious. And as a technology provider and a leader in the space, um, Schneider Electric's a strong message that there, there is an answer to your problem. And we can show success story after success story after success story and all of the silos within the infrastructure business that gives them the confidence that they can create a much better, more capable, more efficient water distribution uh, system than they had before and then take that data and leverage it to a higher purpose. We're very good at providing that level of messaging to our customers. In summary, we help the cities to give better life to their citizens. That is all.